Hey everybody, Brian Goulet here at GouletPens.com and today I want to talk to you about the Keras Customs Ink Fountain Pen. I know, it's confusing. It's a pen called the Ink. What ink do you have in your ink? I don't know, but just bear with me, okay? Um, it's a really kind of a cool pen. So if you want to get more background and detail about Keras Customs as a brand and kind of just like an overall look, you can check out this video I have up here. Just click on that link and you can see a lot more about that. So getting specifically into the ink, this is actually Keras Customs' first fountain pen that they came up with. They have another one that's kind of the baby brother that's called the Fountain K, and I've done a full video on that. If you want to see more details, you can check it out here. But there are a lot of same details on the ink as there are on the Fountain K. So even if you only watch this video, you're still going to get a lot of this similar information. So why, what, what is the appeal of this pen? It's very kind of an industrial tactical kind of design to it. So it's very much kind of like that everyday carry kind of thing you see on Instagram and all that. It's really going to fit nicely into that. I suspect a lot of those pictures are going to be cropping up here pretty soon. But it's very, uh, very durable pen. It's a kind of pen that if you throw it across the parking lot, it's going to be able to pick, pick it back up and write with it. It might get a little dinged up, but it's really kind of a knock around pen. So there are three different metals that you can get with your ink. You can get aluminum, brass, and copper. And the aluminum is gonna give you the most color options. So there's a um, tumbled raw aluminum if you want just the bare metal, but you can also get lots of different colors, which they have an anodizing process that they use. It's a very durable finish on the aluminum as opposed to something like either a lacquer or a powder coating, which can chip and kind of scratch off. This anodizing is one of the most durable processes you can get for color coating metal. The brass and copper themselves are just bare metal, and those metals are going to oxidize and patina over time. So you can polish them up and keep them looking shiny if you want to, but I think a lot of the appeal for those metals is going to be the fact that they will look really kind of rustic and earthy over time as you use them. So all in all, you have a lot of different options here, but you have basically 12 different colored aluminums, one raw aluminum, the brass and the copper, so that makes 15 different total color options that you have for this pen. And as if that wasn't enough options, you have five different grips that you can get for this pen as well that you can uh, make in combination with any of these 15 colors. So depending on the metal you go with, it can kind of change the weight a little bit, but it's really going to give kind of a different look depending on which one you go with. So when you get the pen, you're going to get the cap and the body together, and then you choose your grip to match whichever body and cap combination you go with. I can't even discuss this pen without talking about the weight of it because it is really kind of one of the things that stands out the most. The lightest version, which is kind of the all aluminum components with the converter included, is 42 grams, which is really fairly heavy. It's not the heaviest pen, but it's definitely going to be uh, probably too heavy for most people, especially if you have smaller hands. And if you use it for long writing sessions, it may start to fatigue your hand a little bit. But if you really want to go nuts, take a look at the brass and the copper version of this pen. The copper, because the metal itself is heavier, is actually the heaviest version of the pen. With the converter, you're looking at 120 grams, which is by far the heaviest pen that we have ever carried here at Goulet. Just for perspective, the previous heaviest pen we've ever had is the Visconti Opera Master, which is 60 grams. So it's twice as heavy as the Visconti Opera Master. It is just almost insane, which makes it all that much more appealing to people like me who just want to have the most ridiculous, heaviest pen that you can get. When I'm talking about the balance of the pen, it's really only the body that I'm worried about because this pen doesn't post. You can kind of force it on there, but yeah, you, you really shouldn't. So if you're getting an aluminum body with an aluminum grip, it's going to be ever so slightly back weighted. Whereas if you're getting a brass or a copper grip on aluminum pen, it's going to kind of front weight it a little bit. But if you're getting, you know, basically if you're getting a grip to match whatever metal of body of the pen you're getting, just know it's going to be slightly back weighted. And if you're getting <laughs> the brass or the copper one, really the weighting, you're not even going to notice it because it's just going to be straight up heavy. So because this pen has a metal grip, I know sometimes people can think metal means slippery. That's not necessarily the case here. The black one is kind of going to be the, I guess, slipperiest one of the bunch. But they're not textured per se, but they have kind of a rough finish to them. So um, they are going to be smooth, but not necessarily slippery in your hands as if it was, if it was like a chrome-plated metal. You know, kind of like the, the Lamy Studio or something like that. That's kind of like the classic pen I think of when I think of a slippery grip. 
So the grip is uh, kind of contoured. Even though it's a larger pen, the grip itself is actually not uh, unreasonably large. So I think it'll be somewhat comfortable even for those with smaller hands. Um, though if you are going to be holding a little further back, like me with large hands, your thumb may rest on the threads. And these threads um, do have a little bit of bite to them. So if that's something that typically bothers you, just be aware that that's something that you may run into here. So one interesting thing about this ink is when they designed the grip, they actually made it so that the nib unit is kind of inset into the grip a little bit. And you can really see that difference when I compare it to this Edison Nouveau Premier. And even though it's the same number six size nib on both pens, because the way the grip is designed on the ink, you're actually going to be able to grip it further down on the pen than you would on most other pens with the same size nib. The nibs on the ink are all stainless steel made by Bach in Germany, a respected nib maker. And it's available in extra fine, fine, medium, and broad. One thing about these Keras Customs nibs is there's actually no stamping of the nib size on the nib surface itself. The way that you can tell the nib size that you have is they actually have a coloring on the nib housing. White is extra fine, no color or black is fine, Medium is yellow, and red is broad. These are basically like you would expect with German-made nibs. They're gonna be you know, not as fine as maybe the Japanese brands would, but I find them to be pretty consistent with other brands like you know, Lamy and Kaweco and Parker and things like that. Um, the extra fine and the fine are really not super, super fine, and there's, there's not a huge degree of difference in between the two of them. Um, they flow very generous, uh, I would call them wet writers, all the nib sizes. Um, and there's not a huge degree of difference between extra fine, fine, and really, honestly, even the medium is fairly close to the fine as well. The broad one is the one that's really the gusher out of the bunch. So all of these nibs are going to write really well, especially if you like to have a lot of shading and you have some decent paper that'll hold the ink. So let's talk about the cap. It has a triple start thread, which means that it can actually start threading onto the pen in any of three places. So it does make it pretty easy to start the thread, but it does have kind of a long threading, so it means that it's got a one and three quarter rotation. So it's a couple of times you're gonna have to twist it to get the pen open or closed. There's no real fancy embellishments like a finial or a center band or anything like that. It's very kind of minimalist design to this pen and it has a stainless steel clip which is very meaty and incredibly stiff. So it's maybe going to feel a little too hard for some of your more delicate clothing if you're actually practically using the clip, but if you're using anything like jeans or coveralls or kind of a more like a work uh, shirt, it's going to be really great, especially because these pens tend to be a little heavier. It's going to feel really secure in your pocket when you have it clipped in there. Filling mechanism is very functional on this pen. It's a standard international cartridge converter and it comes with actually five black cartridges that are the standard international short but it will also take a standard international long cartridge if that happens to be your preference. It does come with a converter as well for use with bottled ink. Even though this pen has a large body that you would really love to eyedrop or convert, I would not recommend that for this pen because it's metal and the ink is going to react with the body of the pen so stick to your cartridges and converters for this one. Talking about pens that are similar to this one, there's really not many of them because it's a fairly unique pen, but the most obvious one would be kind of the little brother to this one, the Fountain K. It's very similar because it has all the same color and metal options, but it's just basically a smaller scaled down version of it. Kaweco also has some pens that are not really that similar because the size is completely different, but they are raw metal. So they have a brass and a couple different aluminum ones, which may have somewhat of a similar appeal. Now the price of this pen is going to vary quite a bit based on the metal that you're getting. The aluminum is going to be the cheapest, around $95, and if you go with the brass or the copper, it's going to jump up significantly, the most expensive one being the copper at $175. And, you know, it's solid metal. And honestly, for what you're getting, an American-made, machined, solid metal pen, I think it's fairly reasonable. And those things are extremely durable. Machining is really nice. Fit and finish is very tight, so I think it's quite fair. So if you want to check these out in more detail, you can get the full technical specs, more pictures, and stuff like that on GouletPens.com. It's also where you can buy it, you know, if that's your thing. Uh, if you have any comments on this or have questions, you can always ask in the comments on YouTube or on our blog. And if you like this video and you want more like it, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching, and right on!